Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California, where we have a teaching center that focuses on excellence, skills enhancement in the broad realm of restorative dentistry. We have many videos on YouTube and I would welcome you to please give me feedback and let me know what I can do to make these videos better and to provide topics that are relevant to your clinical practice or whatever your pursuits may be. Today we're going to discuss the class 3 composite preparation. And the class 3 is actually a very simple preparation, but a lot of people are confused, and I think that we can spend a little bit of time during the video of uh, demystifying some of the confusion. We're going to be performing an ML on tooth number 8, and as we see the tooth from the lingual, we can see that it does not have a very broad contact incisal gingively. It's a rather small contact area. And understanding where the contact area is and where the gingival embrasure is, is critical to understanding how to prepare this particular preparation properly. Let's take a look at the armamentaria. And it can't be simpler than the armamentaria here because we're going to be using essentially one or two burrs, the 329 carbide, or we'll use the 330 carbide. So these two burrs are versatile for this particular preparation and I would suggest the 329 on the left if you want to make a smaller prep. And the 10614 enamel hatchet which will be used for refinement. Let's do a little prep planning before we get started on this simple preparation. It's sometimes helpful to take a pencil and mark exactly where the contact area is located because your preparation is not going to be located entirely in the contact area. Part of it will be gingival to the contact area and part of it will be in the contact area. After all, carry starts below the contact area and then migrates in towards the dentin and up and out towards the facial, towards the gingival, etc. So this is the contact area and that's not where you want the prep. The prep is going to be decidedly more gingival than the contact area. So we may have a mark that about halfway through the contact would define the incisal wall and approximately two millimeters gingival to that would define the location of the gingival wall. We're going to try to follow the curvature of the tooth. In other words, we're going to follow the DEJ on the axial wall and create more of a rectangular shape with rounded internal line angles when we're completed with the preparation. I think that you want to start your preparation near the bottom of the contact area and then extend your preparation incisally and gingively. Let's look at this from the side view and I want to be clear about this because a lot of people refer to the direction that you push the burr in this preparation as facial depth. In fact it's not facial depth it would be considered facial extension. So as we're extending the burr towards the midpoint of the tooth facial lingually which is about two millimeters, maybe a little bit more than two millimeters, we're going to be pushing the burr facially. The only time we use the word depth in this particular preparation is to describe the axial depth. So let's take a look at how the burr is probably going to be directed in this particular prep towards the facial. In other words, your facial extension will go out in this direction 90 degrees relative to the lingual wall in a facial direction, in other words, in a facial extension. If we were to superimpose the 330 burr here, which measures 1.5 millimeters in length, you can see that the burr is going to extend more than the length of the flutes. Now, you may refer to this as, I need to go deeper, but actually the proper terminology be, would be to say that you need to go more facial. So the preparation is rectangular. And remember, we're going to be performing this preparation entirely in, with indirect division in the mirror. So finger rests and secure chair position is really important. So when you see the preparation as we've drawn it on the tooth, a lot of the preparation is located gingival to the most gingival part of the contact area. After all, that's where the caries is going to be located. And when we start the preparation, let's try to put the burr in the middle of the prep, not only incisal gingively, but mesial distally, so that we have a little bit of protection. 
you notice that the burr is being held 90 degrees relative to the lingual surface and that would be visualized not only from the incisal view but from the proximal view. So let's go ahead and get started. We've made the marks on the tooth which are obviously not necessary clinically or even on a typodont but I've done it here for demonstration purposes and we're going to start the preparation with a small punch cut right in the middle of that intended outline form. So let's take a look at how this gets started. So you'll notice that I made a punch cut that was about 1.5 millimeters in depth towards the facial or your facial extension. And the burr is then going to be reinserted into this small initial hole and then extended incisally and gingivally, making sure to leave a small shell of tooth structure along the proximal to protect hitting the adjacent tooth. We don't have to worry about going too deep axially if we leave about a 0.3 millimeter little shell on the side. There's plenty of room for the burr to fit and for us not to hit the adjacent tooth. The key here is to keep the position 90 degrees relative to the lingual wall and make small little brush strokes to remove tooth structure. This preparation really doesn't take more than about two or three minutes to do. It's pretty simple. Let's take a look as I spend some time performing some of the extensions. I think it was pretty clear in that little clip that we are really spinning the burr at a very low RPM in order to achieve extensions to the outline form. Refinement for the preparation is performed in a, with a combination of the 10614 enamel hatchet, which is an amazing instrument, particularly if it's sharp like this one. And we're going to use this in this direction and upside down in order to get the proper refinement. You'll see that we can use this instrument in this particular way to chop away undermined enamel. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the instrument, insert it into the prep, and just click it over towards the proximal. You'll have no possibility of damaging the adjacent tooth with this particular method. And you're going to knock off that little shell, which is going to allow you to then insert the instrument perpendicular to that and remove any C shapes or any undermined lips of enamel by just pushing it in this direction. So we can push it in here, remove that little area up near the incisal proximal, and then we can slide down along the facial wall. We're not trying to make sharp internal line angles. In fact, we're making rounded line angles, and the reason we need to do that, of course, is because composite needs to be adapted to a round internal form. And you can see that when we use the instrument in one direction by starting at the facial and scraping it out or starting at the gingival and pushing it in and not going from two different directions, we'll never create a sharp line angle. We'll always keep that nice and rounded. You do want to be careful not to scrape tooth number nine. And it's usually pretty easy not to do that, but you want to be a little bit mindful of that as you're moving along. This instrument is one millimeter wide. So our preparation needs to be a little deeper than one millimeter in order for us to have the instrument fit easily. So we've just spent a few seconds really performing a little bit of refinement. Uh, there are still some rough areas, some extra little marks along the outline form that need to be extended. And we're going to use the burr now for that very slowly, very carefully, just using it almost like it was a little sanding device that we're just going to just feather strokes, little brush strokes, just to remove any little lips or irregular areas in the outline form. 
and this is where you need to take a lot of care to avoid hitting the adjacent tooth and avoid making a large preparation. So you can see at this point that it is nearly finished and it didn't take very long at all. We can use the hand instrument again just to remove any little lips down here. We don't want to have that angle, that cable surface angle, to be acute. We want to have it uh, 90 degrees or slightly obtuse so that the enamel rods are supported. When we take the tooth out of the type and look at it from the side, you can see that it is almost like a box on a class 2, but it's dropping at uh, 90 degrees relative to a class 2 box. It's sort of horizontal and all the line angles should be rounded and clean. Do we need to put retention grooves? Well, there's a lot of controversy about that, but usually today most schools are not teaching retention grooves, nor are they teaching cable surface bevels. Leaving a butt joint margin like this is very acceptable. This is the RGS-1, which is showing you that the facial extension is definitely more than 1.5. Now let's look at the RGS-2, which is 2 millimeters. And there we have it. It's almost exactly two millimeters going towards the facial, your facial extension. Not your facial depth, but your facial extension. If we look at the RGS-4, which is four millimeters in length, we can see that the prep is about half of the buccal lingual dimension of the tooth. The RGS-4 is 1.5 millimeters in diameter, and so we can see that the axial depth in this particular case is less than 1.5, but with the RGS-3, which is one millimeter, we can see that it's more than one millimeter. So we're probably looking at it somewhere between 1.2 and 1.4 millimeters of axial depth. We can also use the RGS-2 length to determine the proper dimension incisal gingivally. If we look at the gingival clearance, you can see that it's a little bit less than an RGS-1. So it's about 0.3 millimeters of gingival clearance, and yet the incisal contact has remained intact. We haven't broken that. If we look at this from the facial view, you can see that it barely is visible from the facial. Just a little sliver of the preparation is visible and it follows the contour of the adjacent tooth very nicely. So this is basically the preparation as it's completed. No need for a bevel, no need for retention grooves. Composite resin is going to do very well in this particular preparation design. So I think that if you follow the steps of using the 330 or the 329, followed by the 10614 enamel hatchet and a little bit of refinement with the burrs that we've indicated, the 329 or the 330, almost in a slow speed manner. I think you'll be able to make a preparation that meets the criteria of the clinical situation or any dental school that may be looking at testing your ability to perform a class three prep. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Always trying to improve things to make dentistry better for all of us. Thanks again.